so Brandy, you were on dialysis for four and a half years. Yes. Uh, when did you get the call? So I was actually getting ready to go to dialysis. My husband and I, we have both worked from home from for forever, but we worked with somebody that, um, a lot of the same people actually that were working, you know, I guess, but at the time, um, all my friends really that, you know, they were there when I got like my AV fistula and they, they knew they're like, Brandy's had a liver, but she's waiting for a kidney. And so anyway, I was getting ready to go to dialysis. My husband was walking the dogs quickly before we left. Um, and so he was already gone. And then the phone rings and I see that it's the Saskatoon, you know, clinic. And I hadn't gone for any blood work. I had no appointments coming up. So I'm just like, why are they calling me? And then I thought, you know, if it's a male voice on the end, this is going to be kidney related because all the coordinators at the time, and I, I believe still are, are female. And sure enough, it was it was a male voice. And I recognized it was Dr. Hussein. Hussan? Hussan. Dr. Hussan, um, who's a nephrologist for, you know, post, post-transplants um, at the St. Paul's um, nephrology units there. And he's like, hi, Brandy, you know, how are you? And I'm like, oh, good, you know, just plain coy. <laughs> and uh, he's just like asking me, he's like, are you sick? You know, any colds? So I said, no, nope, feeling good, feeling great. He's like, okay, well, I think we might have a kidney for you. And I was just like, oh, finally. Like, <laughs> it wasn't like emotional for me. It was honestly just like, I had this checklist of things in my life I needed to do. And, you know, I like at the bottom is Europe and then the middle, I'm like, okay, kidney transplant. Like I just very much was like, oh my goodness, finally. <laughs> and I was just so excited, like, but also cautious because one, you know what to expect to some degree because that'll liver. Um, but sometimes knowing what to expect also is not like you, you kind of get in your head about things and you, you know too much. And, and then there's, of course, like you're feeling, oh gosh, there's like a, a family with their loved one right now um, that's like, you know, in a medically induced coma or they're, you know, hooked up and this is like their second to last day with their person. And that's why you're getting that call. So that goes through your head along with like, once I get there, I had to be there the next day. So I went I went to dialysis that day. Um, I didn't tell anyone. I just kind of sat there with a little grin on my face. And I was like, this is going to be the last time I'm here. And in my heart, in my gut, I knew that that would, was going to be the last time. I knew the kidney was going to go through with it. I just, I had that feeling. And so, yeah, I, I didn't say anything to the nurses or, you know, the staff is always changing, but I just kind of went. I took a picture of my last dialysis session and yeah, and that was that. That's the last time I was ever there and uh so the next morning we had to be there we left um regina at like 5 30 we had to be there for eight we got there at eight and to 7 30 at night we waited for this news if basically if the person had passed if the organs were viable um and yeah obviously they were 7 30 rolls in and the doctor comes in with you know like very exhausted because i mean he, it's been a day for him too um and he said it's a go we're we're good to go and then my my husband and i just looked at each other and we're like okay we got to start texting people quickly because he's like okay 15 minutes and so i hadn't told anybody at that point again i didn't want to get people's hopes up i didn't I, I didn't want to get my hopes up and, and then have to tell everybody that it wasn't to go. So yeah, I text my core group of friends. I put um, a post out on Facebook. Um, that's where I usually update everybody on what's happening with my organs and whatnot. And then that was that. And then, yeah, I woke up the next morning. The surgery went great. I think I was in the hospital for maybe nine days. And of course, there's hiccups here and there, but yeah, I. Yeah, I got out, I think it was nine days later and still have my little bean with me. And yeah, now I'm just, you know, trying to do things with my time that of course give me joy, but also give me back. You know, I felt ever since my liver, you know, I have, I have a debt to pay. <laughs> it's amazing with your story, um, I was come full circle now to you being the designer for <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the five year anniversary of you know, green shirt, day t-shirt, mm -hmm. uh, reflections on that. Yeah, well, I definitely think about that. You know, um, when the crash happened, um, I was on dialysis. I don't think I was listed yet for an organ, um, but the boys were going, you know, humble Broncos and they're traveling, you know, to Nipawin. I was born in Nipawin, so, you know, I have 
you know, memories there. So, I mean, it's not a lot. Yeah, I don't hear my my hometown a lot. So, you know, it just, it started with these little things about like, you know, Nippon and then me working at Real District at the time, which is where um, all the hockey um, takes place in Regina, um, the Regina Pats. It's where our CFL stadium is. The whole property is called Real District. And I was a creative director there. Um, so my very first, you know, touch of creativeness came when our marketing team had to put together, you know, um, we put together posters and um, that were all across our property that were all Humboldt stro strong. So, you know, that's kind of how it started with like how the graphic design and Green Shirt Day came to be was this really intimate thing with like making their posters um, and the memorial pieces and the photos to then, you know, a year later, um, you know, because I had worked at Real and everybody was really moved by, you know, that and, you know, organ donation, you know, we bought the green shirts for everybody. And then myself um, and our storyteller, storyteller at the time, Sabine Ahmed, um, we went in front of the Humble Broncos clip and that that was the first time the Boulé saw me and I created a video um, basically like I, I know they hadn't had anybody reach out that were their recipients. Um, and there was so much about organ donation and people signing up that I wanted to put like a face to the recipients and somewhat say, you know, thank you for shining a light on us. Um, and in a lack of a better word, there, there isn't like a marketing campaign that could have done what they continued to do. Um, and, and so like, it was just like, it's something that I wanted to do. And that's kind of how I got ta talking with Toby was that they asked if they could use that video at galas and that's kind of what he like sparked our relationship now the screen shirt like the, the five years so it's kind of like every couple of years we're kind of lining up and doing what we i guess maybe are meant here to kind of do and now i i get to i'm not on dialysis i'm not on a surgery i'm just like living my life now and this is how i'm 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 giving back i think you're the poster <laughs> person that say her her post transplant and we will think of you on april 7th as we're proudly wearing those t-shirts i've got my order in so beautiful thank you so much for having me it's been great and yeah i have my jersey on the way along with my uh my uh my test shirt here so got that going and yeah i'm ready for this year and i can't wait to see everybody participate <laughs>